Hey everyone, I'm Ella from Spline. In today's video, I'll show you how you can make a simple 3D button that reveals a scene when clicked. This tutorial is perfect for beginners who are interested in creating interactive 3D. So let's get started. First thing we need to do here is create our button, which is pretty simple to do. And you can do that by using the rectangle shape. In roundness, you can select arc. Here you can adjust the roundness of the corners. And as an extra tip, you can also click on this icon to adjust the corners individually or by double clicking on the rectangle shape and selecting the specific vector point you want to round. I'm going to add a bit of extrusion and then adjust the colors. Now we can use the text tool to add our word. Now let's quickly review some of the simple interactions that you can apply to a button or icon. We can start with something simple like making the button increase in size when the mouse approaches. To do this, simply group the button, include other elements like text, and you can name it accordingly. I'm going to name it button. And then I'm going to create a new state here and I will increase the size of the button. Now let's use the mouse hover event. And if we go into play mode, as you can see, when I bring my mouse closer, the button reacts this helps the user understand that this is an interactive element. Now I'm going to adjust the speed to make it a little bit more faster. And here, instead of ease and out, I will choose spring. This is a very simple interaction that you can apply to buttons and also 3D icons or really any element in your scene. Something cool for buttons is applying a color change. You can adjust the color in each state to make your button change color when your mouse approaches. For this, create a new state, go to the material panel and simply assign a different color for each state. Now let's add this new transition to the mouse hover event that we created before. and we're going to add a new transition action. In the target, I'm going to select the rectangle where the color change is occurring. And as you can see, we now have these two actions for the same group, where one changes the size and one changes the color. Pretty cool. So for this example, let's create a toggle or like an on and off button. So to create that second button, let's change the position when clicked. To do this, simply select this button and create a new state and adjust the position. And now I have two positions, one for the on and one for the off. Now let's create a mouse down event. So now if I go to the play mode and I see that when clicking, it's changing its position, but the action is not repeated. To ensure that the action is repeated when clicking again, we have to make sure it is in toggle mode.
You can group this and add a mouse hover event or change the color like we did before where we changed the size and the color. Doing this just gives it a better touch of interactivity. Now let's continue with this fun example where we're clicking to reveal this lovely 3D scene. And then let's create that rotation animation for our button. So let's group the text and the rectangle and let's call this button. Now create a new state and adjust the rotation. Let's adjust it to exactly 90 on the X axis. Now let's add some elements that we want to appear when the button rotates. Now I used this house in this tree to create this sweet composition. Also thinking that it can match the word home on my button. So trying to be a little conceptual here. You can design these elements by yourself or add 3D elements from the object library. Here you can find different categories and 3D objects that you can then edit and use for your own example. Take your time and create the scene that you most love and enjoy. Now I'm going to place my elements inside the group where I applied that rotation. This way we can make sure that the objects follow the same rotation as the button. Nice. Now let's create a mouse down event and create a new transition action. Select toggle mode and adjust the state. Let's adjust the duration here to make the transition shorter. Now let's go into play mode. Okay, let's go back and select spring. So this way we have a better bouncy effect. Now let's add a little more animation and interaction to our composition. Now let's add a small rotation to the house that activates every time I bring my cursor closer. Then create a mouse hover event. Now make sure that only the house is selected in the target since in this case I want the animation to only affect the house. And now we can go into play mode and besides the rotating button that reveals the scene we also have our house have this nice little rotation every time we bring our mouse closer to it, making it that much more interactive. And as a final touch, we can also add a small animation to the text. So let's group the text and create a new state and then adjust the size here. And now I simply apply a mouse hover event as before. Cool, and you can explore more with this idea and create other scenes and explore different interactions like making them grow when hovering over them, or again, that color change. Now, what's missing is that if we were to click on any of these buttons, they wouldn't actually open a link. However, we can change that in Spline. For this, we can simply add an open link action. This is a great way to create an experience that links to other web pages. Go to the events panel and here you can add mouse down. Here in action, we can select the option open link. And here you can paste your URL that you want it to link to. For example, spline.design. And in target, here we can decide how we want this link to be opened. That can be in the current tab, a new tab, or a new window. Let's keep it on new tab. And done. Every time we click here, it's going to open this URL in a new window. And to note, you can link URLs to buttons, icons, or any element in your scene that you created in Spline. And that is the end of this tutorial. We encourage you to create your own interactive 3D revealing button, sharing it on social media and in our community because we would love to see it. You can use elements from the Spline library or remix things in the Spline community. Now there are so many more ways you can make interactive buttons and we hope to see you try that in the future, like this animation that activates when you click on the button. All right, thank you for watching. See you the next one, bye.